As we all know, now the differential equations are exact, right? However, sometimes some of those equations they are almost exact. And what do I mean by that? Well, in those situations, I feel it's almost like somebody is behind us and trying to mess around with us. That's all. But it's okay because in this video, I'm going to show you guys how does that person do it, so that we can do it to other people too. No, just kidding. I'm going to show you guys how did that happen, so that we know how to fix the problem. And let's take a look of this example right here. It looks like an exact differential equation, right? But of course, we have to be sure. We have to do the check, right? So right here, let me label this as m. Let me label this as n, and we have to do the partial derivative business, right? This is with dx, so that means I have to take the partial of this with respect to y. So let me write it down right here. So we take the partial of m with respect to y. That means y is the variable. So 4x to the third power in this term it will be the constant. So it stays. Let me put it down right here. And the derivative of sine y in the y world is just cosine y. So we have all together 4x to the third power cosine y, and the derivative of 6x squared in the y world is just zero. So that will be it. And for this, we will have to take the partial of this right here with respect to x. So let me put it down. Partial of n with respect to x, we will have. We just have to focus on x to the fourth power. The derivative of that is 4x to the third power. And the cosine y is a constant. It stays right here. And that's it. And as you can see, these two are the same. So that means this right here it is exact. Okay. All right, so we have an exact equation. Everything's nice because we know how to solve an exact equation already, right? You can watch my other video for that as well.、Um, but this is what happened. As I was mentioning earlier, somebody you know takes out this blue marker, and this is what he is going to do. So he takes a look of this exact differential equation, and he's not so happy about it because this is so perfect, right? Well, as I said, he takes out this blue marker, and he sees that. Well, it seems like we have a lot of x to a power in these terms. So what he's going to do is he's going to divide out everything by x to the third power. Well, he can do anything that he wants, but let me just say he is going to divide everything by x to the third power. And let me just put it down this way for you guys. Let me write it down as one over x to the third power. Right? It's the same as dividing everything by x to the third power, right? And let me just write it down here as well. And of course, we should also do it on the right-hand side, but that would be zero, anyways. So this is what he is going to do, and then he is going to get another equation, of course. This and that together, you see the x to the third power cancel out, so we will end up with four sine of y, and then this and that you will get plus. We will have a x in the denominator, right? So we have six over x, and then close the parentheses, and we have the dx right here. And we add it with x to the fourth power over x to the third power is just a regular x, and we have the cosine of y, and this is with the y, and this and that of course it is still zero. Okay, so now we have a different differential equation, and this is unfortunately not an exact equation anymore. And let's do a real quick check. This is m, this is n. Okay. So right here, let me just put it down here for you guys. We take the partial of m with respect to y. Y is the variable. We only care about this pretty much, right? The derivative of four sine y is just going to be four cosine of y, and the derivative of this in the y world is just zero. And let's look at this and do the partial with respect to x. Well, the derivative of x is just one, so we have this only. We have cosine of y. This is the y. This and that are not the same, right? So you see, this is not an exact equation anymore. However, I would like to call this almost exact. Okay, and the deal is that because this came from an exact differential equation, and you know the only thing that the person did was he multiplied everything by one over x to the third power, or he divided everything by x to the third power. Same thing, right? Well. This is in fact not a bad problem at all, because as long as we can figure out what did the person do, we can just undo it so that we can go from this back to the exact differential equation, and everything will be perfect again, right? So here is the question: If this is the differential equation that we want to solve, 
you know this is not exact, right? How can we make this into an exact equation? How can we figure out what did the person do to us? So let's take a look of what we call the special integrating factor right now. So here's the idea. Assume this is not exact at the moment. However, after we multiply everything by this special integrating factor, the result of that will be exact, okay? And you know, the m and n, they are both functions of x and y. However, let's first come up with a formula for the special integrating factor in terms of just x. So we'll call that mu of x. And later on, I'll also show you a formula for mu of y, a special integrating factor in terms of just y. And of course, the special integrating factor could be both a function of x and y. But seriously, we hope that doesn't happen because the computational part is going to be really hard. So hopefully, uh, this almost exact equation, it came from an exact equation that somebody just divide out either just, you know, in terms of x or an expression in terms of just y. Just exact that. Anyways, let's get started on that. Let's multiply everything by mu of x. So let me put it down right here for you guys. We will have mu of x times m of x, y, and we have the dx, and then we add it with mu of x times n of x, y, dy, and this is still equal to zero because zero times that is still zero, right? All right, this right here, it was not exact. I call that almost exact, but after we have the mu of x right here, this right here, we want it to be exact, okay? So once we know this is exact, we know we have to do the mixed partial derivative, right? So we'll take this, and this is with dx, and it's the whole thing right here, okay? We will take the partial with respect to y of this right here. So it will be mu of x times m of x, y. And we are going to make sure we set this equal to, we take the partial of this with respect to x. Because we know if you want this to be exact, the partial derivative like this will be the same, right? All right, so I'll put this down right here, mu of x times n of x, y, like this. And now let's do some partial derivative. On the left-hand side, yes, it is a product of two functions, mu and m. However, we are doing the partial derivative with respect to y. Mu of x is considered to be a constant, right? And you see, this is the reason why I want to just first talk about mu of x, a special integrating factor in terms of just x first. Because mu of x will be considered a constant in the y world, I don't have to use the product rule right here. So it saves some work, right? All right, so let me just write down the constant mu of x in the y world, and we multiply by, let's take the derivative of m with respect to y. And I'll put this down as partial of m with respect to y like this. And later on, I'm gonna sh show you with this notation, uh, m sub y for the partial derivative. But let me just keep this for now throughout my computation. And this is it, okay? That's the beauty of this. And you know m is a function in terms of both x and y, but let me just write down m right here, okay? And this is equal to, here we are taking the partial with respect to x of mu of x times n of x. Both of these functions contain x, therefore we have to use the product rule. So we cannot avoid not to use the product rule, okay? We, we have to do it right here. But it's better than do the product rule both sides. So once again, this is the reason why we restrict to the special integrating factor in one variable first. Anyways, here's the product rule. I'm gonna keep the first function, which is mu of x, and we multiply by the derivative second. I'll write that down as partial of n with respect to x. Okay, that's partial derivative with respect to x. And we add it with the second function. I'll just write that down as n. n is the same as n of x, y, okay? And we multiply by the derivative the first, and I'll write this down as mu prime of x, the usual derivative formula in one variable. Okay, so now we are gonna see how can we find a formula for the mu of x. This is similar to the um, special integrating factor for the linear differential equation. So here's the deal. I'm going to move this 
to the left hand side because they both have the mu of x, right? So I can also factor that out. So let me factor that out first, mu of x, and open the parentheses. This is still positive, so I'll write that down as partial of m with respect to y. And once I move this to the left hand side, this will be minus, right? So we have the minus partial of n with respect to x, like that. And this is equal to, we have this on the right hand side n times mu prime of x and now what i'm going to do next is i would like to keep the mu prime of x on the numerator so i'm going to divide both sides by the mu of x and you have seen such a computation in the past you know this right here is just the derivative of a natural logarithm right anyways i don't want the end though so let's divide both sides by n like this cancel let's move that to the other side all right so here we go i'm going to put this down right here on the left hand side let me write this down first okay we have mu prime of x over mu of x and this is equal to this right here so we have the partial m with respect to y minus partial n with respect to x or over capital n like that Okay, now here's the deal. We have to integrate this, right? Because that's how we can get rid of the uh, derivative. And we will integrate this with respect to x. Then we'll do that on both sides, of course. And you know, this right here is nothing but just the natural log absolute value of mu of x. Well, how do we know? Because if you write this down, you take the derivative of this, you put mu of x on the bottom, and because of chain rule, you put the derivative of mu on the top, right? So this is the beauty, we can just integrate that and we get this. And for integrating factors, you don't need to worry about the plus d on the left hand side or on the right hand side. Just you don't need a plus d at all. Okay, this is equal to that. Uh, it's the integral partial m with respect to y minus partial n with respect to x or over n. And we have this dx right here. Okay, of course we want to get rid of the natural log. So let's do e to this power and let's do e to that power so that this and that will cancel. On the left hand side, yes, we should still keep the absolute value, right? And I will keep this absolute value for you guys. So I will write down absolute value of mu of x. And this is equal to, we have this giant expression. We have this expression right here. E as the base and we have this integral as the power. So it's the integral power. We have the partial m with respect to y minus partial n with respect to x or over capital N dx. And notice that everything right here is in the integral. So you have to work this out first and then do the integral. Anyways, we have absolute value of mu is equal to this. How can I get rid of the absolute value? Technically, I can just get rid of the absolute value, but you have to make sure you put a plus minus on the right hand side, isn't it? And the idea is that when you want to find an integrating factor, you just need to have one. Right here, we're saying mu is equal to the positive version of this expression or the negative version of this. Which one would you rather use? You can use either one, right? So it doesn't really matter. And you can just, of course, seriously, forget about the absolute value. And even you forget about the plus minus. Let me just say, let's use this right here. Let's use this formula for the mu of x, okay? So let me box this for you guys. So here we have it. This is the formula for mu of x. And similarly, we can work out the similar steps. We can work out the formula for mu of y. And before I show you guys how to work this out, well, within the example that I did earlier, I want to say that once you work this out, okay, the partial of m with respect to y minus partial of n with respect to x all over n, everything right here should contain just x. Why it's not allowed at all? Because on the left hand side, you can see mu is just a function in terms of x. There's no y is allowed, right? So we cannot have any y's right here neither. Otherwise, both sides, they will have disagreement. So this is the formula. And now I'll show you guys how to fix the problem that we had earlier. So now let's solve this differential equation. And as we saw earlier, this is not exact yet. And the usual procedure for exact equation you know, does not apply for this at the moment. And here's the thought process. Whenever we're trying to solve an equation that you know it's not exact, we hope that we can find a special integrating factor in terms of just x or in terms of just y. 
so that we can multiply everything by that special integrating factor and the result of that becomes exact and then we can go through the usual procedure. Well, these kind of equations are hard, okay? Because if you just give this to me on the test or something, I wouldn't know do I have mu of x or do I have mu of y or maybe mu in terms of both x and y. So in this video, the purpose is just to demonstrate mu of x, the formula we saw earlier, works. And then later on, you can see in other videos, I'll show you guys how we can think through about it. Maybe I will have a chance to show you guys some special, special, special cases as well. But anyways, let's get going with mu of x right here. Let's figure out what do we need. Okay, suppose you didn't see the first part of the video right here. Anyways, mu of x is equal to e as the base, and we have integral for the power, and it's partial m with respect to y minus partial n with respect to x or over n dx. And you know this right here is the m, this is the n. And hopefully this all becomes just you know, an expression in terms of x only. Well, let's see. This is going to be e as the base, and we have the integral as the power. Partial m with respect to y, let's look at this. Well, we just have to differentiate this, right? So the derivative of 4 sine y is going to be 4 cosine y, like this. And the derivative of this with respect to y is 0, so that's good. And now that's minus, we have partial n with respect to x. Let's look at this and take the derivative with respect to x. The derivative of x is just 1, and the constant cosine y stays. So we have cosine y right here, right? And then this is all over n, which is that. So let's put this down as x cosine y, and we have the dx. Okay, let's see. We see y's, but hopefully somehow you know, they cancel out. Right here, we have e as the base integral 4 cosine y minus 1 cosine y. Of course, that's 3 cosine y. So put this down right here. Over, this is x cosine y, and we have this dx. And guess what? Look, cosine y, cosine y cancel each other out. So this right here is just going to be e, and let's bring the 3 to the front. We have 3, and then the integral, 1 over x, dx, right? And now this is what? Well, this is just still e, and the 3 is still 3. Integral of 1 over x is just ln, and you can keep the absolute value for now, if you would like, I will for you like this, but you don't need to put on a plus c, okay? And this is what we have. And of course, you have to bring the 3 back here, so you have e to the ln, absolute value of x to the third power, like this. At the end, this and that will cancel. And once again, you can keep the absolute value for now, if you want, but you don't need to, because seriously, you just need to care about the function part. We have been talking about this many times already. So, seriously, you can just drop the absolute value, because this is what you need. As you know now, mu of x is x to the third power. This is all you need, okay? If you keep the absolute value, you have the choice between plus x to the third power or the negative x to the third power, but use the positive version, it's better. All right, so we got it. You see it? Mu of x is equal to x to the third power. This is the special integrating factor. This means I will go back to my original equation and I will multiply everything by x to the third power. Let me just put it down in the front like this, and also put this down as x to the third power right here. And now, I might as well solve this real quick for you guys. And now we are done and that's it.